you know, there have been so much discussion in public on Twitter, and social media about whether Skinwalker is legit, whether it's worth studying. You know, the OSAP program was based in part on experiences that happened there and a concern whether or not there are legitimate national security um, interests there. Is, is it just a mystery, a paranormal mystery, or is it a national security matter? Well, I can tell you this, George, and this is the part that really scares me the most is uh, GPS signals over the ranch, and sometimes it stops at the fence line on the ranch, not just in the region, get jammed and stop working, and even are spoofed to make you make vehicles think that they're underneath the surface and not where they are. And this could cause you know airplanes to crash. We actually had drones uh, crash because of this many times, and these aren't just little cheap drones. I'm talking fifty thousand dollar drones. And that is a, a dangerous thing. If someone has a technology that can do that, they could uh, pick a region and make GPS quit functioning, then you're going to have airplanes that could crash. You could have uh, automated drones that are going to crash. You could have vehicles that follow GPS systems. I mean, there's so many things that that could affect. And if it can do that to GPS, it can do that to other things. So this is a, a capability that's happening, uh, some kind of phenomena that's happening that's, that could potentially be a threat multiple phenomena and s seemingly intelligent right it's an intelligence of some sort well if it, it's it's if it's not intelligent it, it's very uh, serendipitously random because it'll change in a way that is going to befuddle what your plans are whether uh, a perfect example is uh, uh, we'll do experiments and right when we start to everything's working fine uh, perfectly with the equipment and right when we're ready to say okay we're going to take data now a battery will die or uh, a, a piece of equipment will, will, will malfunction or the the memory cards will, will quit working I, I, another perfect example is there was one particular time when i was on the ranch and we got cameras everywhere and every time that i stepped in front of one of these cameras uh, for 40 something seconds the cameras went black so there's 40 something seconds where I'm doing things that there's no record of because the camera the cameras still recorded but they were they blacked out and the audio quit the same kind of thing happened to NIDS the Bigelow organization privately that was there it happened during OSAP but they didn't have the kind of cameras that you guys have what one great contribution of the TV show is you're able to demonstrate those small little things that happen all the time. Compasses go crazy, batteries die, all that nobody time. has ever been able to prove. All the time. I mean, uh, we, we have uh, multiple, all of us carry compasses. We have compasses on our phones, and we'll, we'll pull them out when things start happening, and they'll be spinning, or they'll turn in completely wrong direction. And, and at the same time, the cows will be going crazy. Uh, you know, it, it, who can, I can't explain all that. Can you explain the is there the physics of the hitchhiker effect? I know people find that just too far out. You've experienced it yourself. Yeah, and uh, you know, we we are always nervous about talking about the hitchhiker effect because we might stimulate it. Yeah. We don't know what causes it, but uh, could there be a physics uh, explanation? Well, if it's uh, maybe functioning through quantum physics, there's a possibility of quantum entanglement that uh, somehow whatever describes our uh, consciousness, which is most likely a quantum phenomena, gets entangled uh, with whatever the phenomena is. And so wherever you go, you're still connected to it. And uh, that, sounds, that sounds hokey, but we're, it's called the quantum measurement problem. A lot of scientists are, are, are studying it in great detail, and there's been some Nobel Prize nominations for the, for the topic. And uh, so I think that could be an explanation, or at least uh, somewhere in the ballpark. You've had things happen on the ranch that are creepy. I mean, inexplicable, call it paranormal, but it's happened, it's real, right? Yes, very real. And in fact, uh, one, it's uh, almost uh, like what you would call stigmata that happened to me. Uh, uh, we had a rabbi out do a, a, a ritual to, that was supposed to summon an opening to heaven, uh, which are like a portal is what you would describe it as down at Homestead 2, and when we did the, the ritual, a, uh, a thermal uh, vortex appeared in the middle of Homestead 2, and we got that on FLIR data, and, and it's, it's, it was repeatable. We played an audio recording of the chant back, and it happened again. Well, when the rabbi was there that night, he told me, uh, off camera, he came to me and said, Travis, they said they're going to come to you tonight. And I'm like, what, what are you talking about? And uh, he said, well, they said they're going to they're gonna come see you. 
I said, who's they? And, he, and the rabbi said, well, whoever it is that's here. I thought he was messing with me, right? Uh, well, that night, uh, I, I had a dream. Uh, I was in my trailer, that uh, my trailer doors were locked and everything, and I, I had a sort of a waking dream that the, uh, my, the trailer door uh, opened and my bedroom uh, door slid open and a native walked in to my bedroom, an old, a really old native, and he looked at me and he shook his head and he reached out and he touched me on the face right there. Well, and then he, then he shook his head and he walked away and I woke up startled. And I went to the bathroom, you know, splash water on my face, kind of get my bearings. And when I looked in the mirror, I was bleeding from that spot. And I had a, a, a sore appear there and stayed there for several days. And, and that, that was bizarre to me. I, I can't explain it. You know, you could probably explain away a bug bit me or something. I swatted myself, but it, it, did, it didn't look like that. It looked like, just like somebody had really pressed me really hard right there. You've taken it home with you, haven't you? Oh, uh, I, I have seen some things, and some things that my car has started and stopped itself. Uh, sometimes it'll the electronics will act weird for no reason, and then they'll be fine. I've actually had that happen once driving uh, out of my driveway. My car just turned itself off, and I just happened to get out because I was wondering, just you know, curiosity, and I thought, well, if I'm at the ranch, I'm gonna get out and start looking around. So I got out of the car and I looked up and there was a, a, an odd vortex in the clouds above, above my house uh, when this happened. I, I can't explain that. I'm just saying those are correlated events. Uh, I, I don't have any other data to go along with that, but that's a weird piece of data. But when I got back in the car, cranked right up. I guess the correlation would be what other people have reported. I mean, a lot of people who've been at the ranch have taken things home. Pretty frightening things that, you know, and it lasts for a long time. Yeah, uh, I, I've talked with a lot of people who were there uh, during the, the Bigelow era and then people that have been out there now and uh, many people uh, have strange things happen at home that can't be explained. They see things, things happen, uh, uh, things fail, they have uh, actual things move in their house that they don't remember moving them. Uh, and, and so mine hasn't gotten that bad but I do have weird spooky things happen occasionally. Is there overlap of when you're working on the TV show and then you learn there was this OSAP program that did a big study and produced a lot of reports and are you able to go look at that stuff? Are you able, hey, I'm gonna go seek out the guys who did this study so I can find out. If you've got class, you've got security clearances, maybe you could see it. Yeah, and uh, uh, of course I couldn't talk about the details of any of that, right. but, of, but of course, I mean, uh, anybody with any sense, right? If they have access to read information, this weird stuff's happened to them, they're gonna go read the information. So I can tell you that I've asked the people who know uh, uh, and, and have been briefed as much as people know about. Uh, I, I think some of the information though, uh, Mr. Bigelow kept to himself. Yeah. And, and so we haven't been privy to that particular information. You know, the NIDS guys go in, uh, Bigelow and his organization, and they're drawn by flying saucers, UFOs. They go in there, they're going to study that, but they find all this other stuff. And they really don't have a battle plan for how to go after it. I mean, they did some basic stuff. They looked for geomagnetic anomalies. They looked for psychoactive plants. Maybe that was causing hallucinations. And when they started ruling those things out, then they tried to interact with it. Is there a battle plan that works for this? I mean, you, we've talked before about this. You in essence, poke the bear. Hey, let's try this, see what happens. I don't know what else to do other than uh, try a stimulus and look for a response uh, because it's so strange. It's not your typical mix this chemical and that chemical <laughs> and you get this reaction. In, in, in this case, you can mix this chemical and that chemical and depending on the day and, 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 and some whimsy, you get a completely different reaction. So uh, what, what I uh, am trying to do uh, and, and with Eric and the other guys out there is we do as many different experiments that might stimulate something across all the physical spectrum of, of, of stimulus, you know, electromagnetic, magnetic, uh, gamma rays, uh, uh, actual uh, particle radiation, uh, like rockets, digging, drilling, you, know, you name it, anything we can think of, uh, we're trying to see if it, it, we do this, this happens. Hard to predict though. Uh, almost every time something different happens, so. <laughs> But we have narrowed down to one thing that seems to happen all the time. And uh, uh, actually it's really two things. And, and I would say between 80 and 90% of, of every uh, cases of experiments that we do, when a phenomena occurs, we are measuring microwaves and we're measuring gamma rays. 
And so I find that telling. What it's telling me yet, I don't understand, but it's happening all, uh, very frequently. The radiation exposure. So you get exposed to radiation. You had serious effects, health effects. Yeah, I, uh, uh, they didn't show the details of it on the show because, you know, it's a little bit eerie, a little bit spooky. Personal, but, too. Yeah, yeah. But it actually caused me some medical issues. Uh, I, had to, I saw two or three different doctors about it. Uh, I'm, I'm fine now. Uh, while I am going to be watching for future markers of like leukemia or cancer things, but I, I don't think the dose was big enough for that. But I had uh, the classic symptoms of radiation sickness, um, dark urine, uh, uh, burn marks, uh, and, and I had some uh, temporary hair, hair loss. Um, and and that, uh, it took me six months, almost to a year to get completely over it. But um, I wasn't expecting anything like that, right? Uh, and the weirdness was there were people as close to me as you, and they were wearing uh, radiation uh, dosimeters as well. Theirs were fine. How could it, uh, radiation doesn't work that way, or at least as far as we know. So while mine went off and I get the dose, people right next to me didn't. And whatever the source of radiation was, it wasn't there after a while. The next day, we had a special uh, a contractor group that does this for the Navy on new vehicles come out and look and scour the ranch for any sources of radiation. There was no source of radiation there. But uh, since then, we have measured transient high uh, uh, doses of radiation in specific locations. And we only have a handful of of dosimeters and gamma ray detectors and for us to find it just by placing one. I was put one out in the field and see what happens today and it happened. That's really odd. The odds of you hitting that, that you know, that's like hitting the game winning shot every single time from the other team's baseline, right? You, I don't want to give away the season that's underway right now, but I mean, there are a lot of fairly dramatic things, experiments that you tried that did generate reactions. Yeah, uh, we, we actually, we did multiple stimuluses at a time uh, uh, multiple stimuli at a time this year and, and sometimes we saw some very amazing things and got some very amazing uh, footage and data uh, simultaneously. Uh, you know the things that have aired uh, we, could, we could talk about you know where we had telescopes that were uh, the databases inside the telescopes were erased real time while we were watching them and they, there's no mechanism for that. If I wanted to do that I don't even know how to reverse engineer that phenomenon. Uh, and then in the same night we had a sphere fly over the ranch that was unmistakably an unidentified flying object, not just some aerial phenomena. And, and so uh, th th it was absolutely incredible. Where does it come from and where did it go? Th that's the very inter interesting question. You know, we, wa we had cameras going, but suddenly it's just there and it's flying over the ranch, it does a thing, and then suddenly it's not there. So where did it go? Where did it come from? I don't know. Is part of your interest in the ranch, I mean, as a scientist, you want to figure this out. Is it also fun? Is it fun? It's, uh, it's adventurous is the right way to say it. Uh, it it's fun like uh, in you went through something uh, like an adventure movie. It was scary at the time, but when you look back on it, it was an amazing uh, experience that you got to do.